Hi everyone, this is Andy plus AI. Today I'm going to tell you how we built a fully working ZX Spectrum emulator on the M5 stack card pewter and even got it running on a large external display. This project turned out to be way more complicated than it looked at first, but that's exactly why it's fun. Let's get into it. The card pewter ad runs on an ESP32 S3 at 240 MHz. It only has 327 kilobytes of RAM, and you have to fight for every single byte. There's no PS RAM at all, and the usable flash for the program is about 3 megabytes. We completely disabled the built-in screen and connected an external 480 by 320 ILI 9488 display over SPI. The display runs at 50 MHz for writes and around 16 MHz for reads. The SD card is also on SPI. And here's the key detail. Both the display and the SD card both use the same SPI bus. That caused about half of all the problems you'll hear about today. Memory was the first big obstacle. We tried to allocate a full frame burst size at 480 by 320. It needs around 460 kilobytes, which is more than the entire RAM of the device. So we switched to native ZX resolution, 256 by 192, which fits into about 98 kilobytes in RGB 565. The image is then centered on the large screen with big offsets on each side. Performance was another challenge. If you try to render the whole screen every frame, the FTS collapses, so we render only every fifth frame. The ZX logic still runs at a real 50 FPS, but the output is around 40 FPS, and it's visually smooth. The shared SPI bus caused the next wave of problems. Both peripherals fight for the bus if you don't handle chip select lines and initialization order very carefully we ended up adding a helper that quiets the display before the SD card is used, and only after the SD is done, we return control to the display. Without that, the system froze, crashed, or drew white garbage on the screen. The emulation itself uses the classic Lin Keifeng Z80C0 core, one of the most accurate and widely used. The emulated CPU runs at around 3.5 MHz, just like the original ZX48K. Each frame is exactly 69,888 T-states. To keep the timing accurate and avoid drifting forward or falling behind, we execute instructions in very small slices, only 128 T-states per chunk. This keeps the timing stable across the entire frame. Interrupts fire exactly every 20 milliseconds, just like on a real spectrum. We had to properly implement the delay after the EI instruction, the interrupt isn't enabled immediately, but only after the next instruction. Without that, the ROM fell into an infinite loop. ZX VRAM is also special. 6144 bytes of bitmap, plus 768 bytes of attributes. To speed things up, we removed slow memory access calls and switched to a direct pointer to VRAM. That alone made rendering two or three times faster. Audio runs on a separate task on Core 1, we use a 16 kHz sample rate, 16-bit mono, with a ping-pong buffer. One buffer plays while the other is being filled. This completely removes pops and crackling. Another quirk of the card pewter ad is that the microphone and speaker share the same I2S peripheral, so we have to disable the microphone before enabling the speaker. The visual interface includes two display modes, pixel perfect one-to-one -one, and a zoom mode with 1.0 to 2.5x scaling and panning. The emulator supports the classic .SNA, .Z80, and .TAP formats. Screenshots save as BMP256 by 192 into s slash ZX screenshots on the SD card and are automatically numbered. The menu and file browser have been scaled up to look clean on the big screen. So, in the end, we now have a fully working ZX48K emulator running on a big external display with stable 40 FPS, working audio, keyboard input, game loading, screenshots, and a whole bunch of optimizations to make it survive on the limited hardware of the card pewter ad. There were a lot of issues and a lot of debugging, but with the help of ChatGPT, we managed to solve everything and get the emulator running smoothly. This was Andy plus AI. See you next time, nerds.